Irembo Kimu na Tanzambi ya Mazulu, Kimfumo Kyakuisa. Glory to the Mosai, Tatanzambi, and Pungu Tulendo. Uh, give you greetings to all the Bantu people scattered across the earth and all the non Bantus who are supporting and watching us. Um, I greet everyone here and give honor to Tatanzambi and Pungu Tulendo. Give a praise to the Mosai, ya Congo, our Congo. Blessings be upon Yisaya, Congo, Kuswa, and the one semi, all the Maliki Congo, the Abafundi, the prophets of Yisaya, of Yisaya, to all of those who are in this work, we give honor and all of you to today. Um, I'm going to talk about a very um, deep topic because it hips home as to why things around the earth are going through what they're going through. And it's going to heat to the core of the issue of the matter that many people don't realize what has happened to them. And I'm sadly, this is something that's been going on for many, 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 many generations of people. And my role in this video is to make this understanding more clear that even this awakening, this is one of the reasons why, as I mentioned before, this awakening is dangerous to the establishment because of what's going on. With it, the changes and impacts it's having, um, many people are seeing things in the world differently and it's not always a good thing you know i had a nice conversation with our brothers uh, Mikel masa alex uh, yakubi uh, uh, brother keith and myself and as we were talking this is something i guess the, as the one that likes to show the issue at hand as to why it's so hard to really see through all of the deceptions, through the lies, why people continue to believe what they want to believe, why it's so hard for people to change their ways, why many people are not chosen by the Most High, because if they are truly chosen, they will recognize the things that we recognize. And of course, it also puts you in harm's way because what is the, I'm going to show you is why so many people don't want to know the truth or if they think they know the truth, they think there's that, that everything is okay. Why they believe certain things, why, why they've been, why, why they've been, uh, meant to see what they not why they see what is true uh, why they don't really interpret scripture the way they should why many people don't realize that scripture has actually been altered to favor those who are choosing to teach um, different things there's a reason why you're made to think that the translations that you are given are supposed to be pretty much accurate, <clears throat> all because of what I'm going to tell you has to do with what I'm going to call the biggest hustle ever. The biggest hustle. Sadly, this hustle that I'm going to talk about starts even <clears throat> with the chosen and anointed of the Most High. It goes all the way back to uh, the father Adama, it goes all through the days of Noah. Up to now, oh, it's all scooting. Me. And I'm going to break it down why this is so important to realize. All right, so we have the Abafundi. We know now these are all. Um, now I'm going to start with first one. This is Mark, Marco, Marca. 
uh, chapter, uh, sorry, not Matea, Matea to teach. You know, thank you for Brother Elata for that. Chapter 10. And it says, and calling his 12 disciples to him, Isaiah, Yesu gave them the authority over unclean spirits. Okay. Make this, underline this, authority over unclean spirits so that they could drive them out and heal every disease and sickness. Now, I'm going to show you why religion itself is a major hustle, has been a major hustle for so many years. And it all started because the Bantu people, as I'm going to demonstrate at the, at the, at the bay bottom of it, we lost the connection to the Most High because of what I'm going to talk about. A uh, member of many kingdoms at that time were based off of wealth, power. There was one main kingdom, Rome, at the time. Served many different gods, which we know now many different gods are actually more like fallen angels, fallen deity, uh, demons. And this is something that was very popular to, for the, the Messiah had to do was cast out unclean spirits among his people. And this is why this is something that many people now, because of the hustle that has now become out of this, they like to fake these things or make you believe something that isn't entirely true. All right, so. It says here, so when you believe in Isaiah, the world says Jesus. Okay. You're supposed to have authority over unclean spirits. Now, this has been pulled out of context to basically demonstrate that the Gentiles have been given the same authority that the children of Isolele, okay, Israel, Israel, okay. This is something that they're supposed to be given the authority as well because he's talking to the Awafundi, to the Bantu people, not those who you think they are because it's, you know, the Isaiah has already demonstrated many times that there are those who are also benefiting from this hustle. <clears throat> so it says here, when you have the authority over a community so that they could drive them out and heal every disease and sickness, okay? The, the emphasis is on every. So the Holy Spirit or the Mwanda and Sami, okay? When you have the authority of the, through the most, most high, Isaiah, this is something that you're allowed to have. This is what makes you like the Maliki Congo, which is the angels. This is makes you like the other elders or fathers that have passed because other, other, other um, prophets have been given this same ability. All right, so it talks about, and these are the name of the 12. First, Simo called Kepa, and they, called, they changed it to Peter, and his brother, Andrew. So he had a brother named Andrew, Yaounde, or James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, Yokana, or John, Philippi, Philippe, and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matea, the tax collector, tax collector, James, son of Alphibus, so this is another, another this really kids, it's really Yaounde, of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the Zealot. Okay. Um, if you ever know who the, ze the Zealots are, it's actually a Hebrew Israelite group called uh, Sakari. They are affiliated with the history of these Zealot people when it comes to that name. Those are the ones that started the war with Rome. Y'all own the Iscariot who betrayed Isaiah. Okay, we have these. Now, keep in mind, he also was given this authority. Hello. 
So if he has this authority, he must be connected somehow to Yisolele. And these 12 Yisaiah sent out the following strong said, do not go onto the road. No, let's pay attention. Do not go onto the road of the Gentiles or the Bongo or the Mondele or the Ngoi or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather, go rather to the lost sheep of Yisolele. Israel, we know where that comes from, really. It was never called this, Israela. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Okay. Heal the sick. Now, here's the point. So this is where, this is the business of religion. Because this is something that's very important to see how people get manipulated by what they call charismatic leaders or programming or what you consider to be um, a man who carries the title. You automatically assume that they have the connection to Jesus. They, they believe it themselves. However, you ask them to do these things, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Emphasis on freely you have received, freely give. So this is where the power was given freely and you're supposed to do it freely, you give back. Do not carry any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the road or second tunic or sandals or staff for the worker is worthy of his provisions. So the way Isaiah is demonstrating in this text is that the work that you do is what gives you the reward, <clears throat> which is not always about silver, gold, copper. Like I said, they didn't even take extra clothing, okay? Now listen to this. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy there and stay at his house or her house until you move on. So you, what he's trying to show you is you, okay, this is the deception and I'm going to break it down. He's showing you that not everybody is worthy. So this is a discernment thing. until you move on. As you enter the home, greet its occupants. If the home is worthy, let your peace rest on it. Worthy of what? Worthy of receiving the message. Worthy of being considered, receiving the the peace or the Mwanda. This is why we try to say not everybody is chosen for the Mwanda and Semi or the Holy Spirit. This is going to be the big lie that is taught. Okay. But if it is not, let your peace return to you. So he's saying, don't even bring peace to this home. Don't even let your power of peace rest upon this house. So here we go. The Messiah himself, Hamasiya, Gisaya Congo, the one that called Jesus, or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he is telling you right now that there is a difference when you go and preach the gospel. First of all, it was never supposed to go to the who? The Gentiles. Or the Samaritans, but rather to the who? The lost sheep of Isolele. The Bantu people that were lost. Lost, not always meaning physically lost, but spiritually lost.
Now it says, and if anyone will not welcome you or heed your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town, meaning that you don't allow their spirits or their feelings or whatever they have attached themselves to you, you get rid of it. Okay. And then he says, truly, I tell you, it would be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment for that town. Now, when we look at this Bantu truth, this Bantu awakening, this, the teachings of what we understand now has been the deception upon our people, we have an issue here. Lack of judgment upon those that followed these abafundi or disciples or whatever you want, how you want to call it, lack of judgment because we start to see now our people who had the power, who were with the Most High, did not heed this teaching. First of all, they went unto the Gentiles. This was an argument between Kepa and Sola. But when they went on to the Gentiles, okay, many things began to change, even the names, how they, determine, how they interpreted things. But one of the things, the reason why this happened is our people were not receiving a lot of dust shaking off the feet. Now I'm going to demonstrate. Behold, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. So in our own Bantu people, we have a lot of wolves, a lot of wicked people. Therefore, you had to be shrewd as a snake. So you had to pay close attention who was worth talking to and who was not. Now, does that mean you got your point is you got to look for people who are, who require the physician, as he said. And he says, but beware of muntus or men, for they will hand you over to their councils and flog you in their synagogues. So what he's saying is, there are people that will try to destroy you just for what you say. Okay. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. So who goes first is always about Yisolele Bantu. It's always about the Benabetu Yisolele that later became, because of what happened with the Gentiles, Israel is uh, the synagogue of, you know, what, Satani, all these different things started to change going forward because of mixing of the spirits. Because like he said, you're not supposed to always think that everybody that says they're with you is with you. You have to be like a snake. Use what they call, this is basically saying have discernment. So now, because that didn't happen, the kingdom, of course, we know how it destroyed of uh, Yisolele. The people got scattered. Now, of course, the doctrine still continued to be taught into the Gentiles, but also to the Bantu people. But the Bantu people held on to the more pure form, whereas the Gentiles mixed their spirituality and resulted in the concept of religion. And because of that, Okay, we fell for what we call the hustle. What is the hustle? Okay. So as we grew, now this is why the Mosai calls us a harlot, because it tells you in the North American informal, engage in prostitution. So as Gomer, this is exactly how we were hustled 
to become like a harlot. Obtained by forceful action or persuasion. And many people in the Congo, in the, in the Bena Congo region, experience this mightily. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Also, a fraud or swindle. Okay, so you're saying, well, how does that apply to religion? How does that consider my church or where I come from? How am I being hustled? I don't think my pastor is doing that. I don't think my pastors are saying I'm not doing that. Okay, let's take a look. Remember what Isaiah said about uh, freely you receive, freely you give. All right. This is called the business of religion. Let's look at it. Now, this person is defending it, but we're going to get into why this doesn't make any sense at all. When you look at, this is why I said, the Gentile mentality versus the Most High mentality will never match. Okay? It says, it says religion gets a bad rap in the 24-7 news cycle. It says, in some strands, religion has been associated with populism sweeping the globe, including the evangelical surge that helped put Donald Trump in the White House, excuse me. This might blind us to the fact that religion is a significant source of America's economic and social strength. Problem. Okay. The most high. If you just go through the scriptures and pay attention, okay. Did he ever intend, and Isaiah is saying this even himself in the book of Matthew, was it ever intended to become a source of wealth? No. Because your inheritance is supposed to be where? With the kingdom. And this is how everything gets distorted, and this is how a hustle starts. It says religion annually contributes to $1.2 trillion of social economic value to the United States economy. Now, what's wrong with this picture? If this is so true, then what is wrong? Then why is there so much disparity of distribution of wealth if religion is supposed to be such a prominent part especially with Christianity, if it's supposed to be functioning the way the Messiah is talking about, then what's up with all the problems? The system, as you can see, is obviously rigged in the favor of those who manipulate the knowledge. Because many of the people that you stand up there and call themselves pastors, priests, imams, whatever you want to call them, what role do they really serve? Okay, what is their purpose? As the Most High in the scriptures has always pointed out, it's always about Yakuba. It's always about Jacob. That has never changed. The mindset is you've been hustled into thinking that there is a difference, which is why your Connor called it the three frogs. Okay, religion, which we now looked into, it actually means to bind oneself. Okay, it actually consists of two words, Ra and Legion. They changed the E so that you wouldn't notice it's Ra. Now, if people want to sit there and argue with the case that they don't believe that, hey, that's on you. But the reality of the matter is the, the numbers don't lie, okay? Let's take a look. Congregations give $84 billion annually, okay? 
84 billion dollars are given annually out of your own pocket. Let's go back to Matthew 10. Matthew, oh, sorry. What did he say? Do not carry any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Now, of course, people are going to argue, oh, well, we live in a world where money is a big deal. And this, yeah, it got that way because of the Gentile mentality when it comes to the concept of wealth. The Gentile mentality of wealth has never been in alignment with the creator's version. Okay. We, as a nation, you solely as a nation, turned, became influenced that this is part of the way it should be in this world. And this is why so many people don't even understand that there's a manipulation hustle going on that has to do with the demonic realm convincing people that this is the way it's supposed to be when it's never supposed to be this way. Satan is the biggest hustler of hustlers from the beginning. Convincing you that something is one way when it is not. Talking you into the fact that, oh, it's supposed to be like this. I'm born into it. I'm not going to be the one to change it. Okay. This is the issue that we're even dealing with today, even in this awakening. Okay. There are those who use the gifts that are given by the Most High to those who actually have true gifts for the purpose of their personal gain. The reason why this awakening is such a massive, um, a massive um, influence is, is because it takes the mindset off of the individual and their wealth and puts it back onto the nation as a whole. And what that does is it creates a conflict. Because when you look at Christianity, helping others is by your own choice. But the obligation, but yet you will sit there and say as an obligation, I am helping my brothers and sisters when I give my little bit, you know, Okay, but whose kingdom are you really, see the problem is the kingdom that you're thinking that you're building is actually the hustle of what was meant for a specific group of people to help others. The Bantu people were the ones who were supposed to help others. Okay, so when Yesiah started preaching this message, it started to put a bad taste in the mouth of those who were benefiting the wolves, so to speak, okay, from how the system was being manipulated. And let's go to how I mean. Let's go to Matea, uh, verse 21, chapter 21. Okay. And Isaiah went to the temple of Tatanzambi, the Mosai Yakongo, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, in the Itempele, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be the house of prayer, but you have made it in it made it a den of thieves. The majority, now let's go back to this right here. <laughs> the congregation takes it upon the merit of the pastor that their distribution, it actually means, it actually says, 
the total is really 418 billion. That this is actually going back to help those in need. Here's the problem. I'm going to show you how you can tell you're being hustled. Let's go to this. This is a list of the wealthiest religious leaders in the world. Okay. The majority of these people are Christian pastors. You have Bill Moyers, one, 1 million. Rick Warren, 25 million. Joel Osteen, 40 million. Let me see if I'm missing somebody. Okay. Kirk Cameron, 20 million. Billy Graham, of course, he's gone, but his wealth is gone, 25 million. Net worth, 1.5 million for Charles Stanley. We'll need to buy them, 10 million. R.C. Sproul, 2 million. George Foreman, $250 million. Tony Campolo, $4 million. And T. Wright, $2.5 million. I haven't even come to everyone that I just showed you is Christianity based so far. John Van Imp, Impe, I guess the way you say the name. Jack Van Imp. 2.5 million. Now we come to Louis Farrakhan, the wealthiest Muslim on almost probably one of the wealthiest Muslim pastors on the planet, 3 million. Ernie Fletcher, 3 million. Another preacher, and he's also in politics, governor. Clifton Davis. He actually played a role of a pastor. Now he's preaching as a real one, supposedly. Three million. Reinhard Bonke, four million. Leroy Jenkins, four million. Noel Jones, five million. John Hagee, five million. Joseph Prince, five million. Oh, buddy boy, Sharpton, five million. Eddie Long, who is no longer with us, five million. Of course, he got caught up. See, here he has been the center of sexual allegation charges, though he denied. We know why that happens. And the most high will expose people that you don't understand, he's going to expose a lot about all of this. K. Arthur, five million. John MacArthur, five million. And every person that I just shared with you is part of the Knights Templar, Eastern Star, Freemasonry, and which we now know, if you're paying close attention to what I've been saying, their whole system is based off of the worship of Nimrod which is Horus, or whatever you want to call him. The one eye, which they stole from the Mosai anyway, but it has nothing to do with the creator whatsoever, although you've been tricked into believing that. Paula White, five million. Okay, we got Ravi Sakarius. Again, we have only mentioned one other religion besides Christianity so far. Chris Okuti, 7.5 million. Matthew Ashimolowo, 10 million. Jesse Jackson, 10 million. Joyce Myers, 10 million. Peter Popoff, 10 million. Ed Young, 11 million. 
TB Joshua, which we now is no longer with us, $15 million. Cindy Trim, $15 million. Mm -hmm. Ernest Angley, $15 million. TD Jakes, $18 million. Kenneth Copeland, $26.5 million. Craftsville Dollar, $27 million. John Danforth, $30 million. Benny Hinn, $42 million. Chris Oyakolime, $50 million. Robert Tilton, $50 million. Janice Crouch, $50 million. Look at the outfit, by the way. <laughs> Flashy. Enoch Odeboye, $55 million. Now, the problem I'm having with these Nigerian pastors, I know a brother who lives in Nigeria. Many people know people in Nigeria. The people there are struggling financially like you wouldn't believe. But not the pastors, apparently, who are supposed to be doing what? Jimmy Swaggart, 1.5 million. I believe he's gone. I can't remember. David Oyepedo, Oyedepo, $150 million. Wow. What kind of miracles is he doing? Or is he doing hardly any? Richard Rossi, $1 million. Pat Robertson, $500 million, 700 Club. Now, let's get to, <laughs> wow. Adir Marcelo, $1.1 billion. <laughs> and you see, he's obviously a rabbi form person. The outfit he's got on. Yeah, buddy. Tatan Zombie. Paul Kane. And so, what I'm saying is let's go to Walter Mercado, $10 million. Victoria Olstein, $100 million. Kanye West, $240 million. Supreme Master Ching Hai. The network is unknown, but I'm pretty sure she's up there. Sri Chinmoy, $1.6 million. Now he's Indian, Hinduism. Mark Driscoll, $2.5 million. Adhut Baba Sivan, I can't, can't say his name, six million. Obviously, this is more into the Hinduism again. Baba Ramdev, $230 million. Acharya Bhakrishna. $1.4 billion. And we know the condition of India right now, people. Eww. Shinji Takahashi. I guess I'm pretty sure he's gone. He was born in 1927. $3 million. The light of God. Mata, I'm not even going to try to say her name. A teacher and Hindu spiritual leader, 
$230 million. And the idols, do they preach? Are they actually helping anybody? I don't know. Ayadoli or read this stuff for $19 million. And I know we talked to Brother Yanata. He's given the secrets to many of these pastors where they actually go to get their power from, their influence, in order to be able to convince people that they have the ability to do things. So this is why when you look at what's going on with the Bantu awakening, okay, and you look at what's going on with the teaching of scripture, you have to understand that these individuals, maybe they do have certain gifts, maybe they don't. But most of the time you've seen that they're going to tell you, oh, we're receiving this because of our blessings from the Most High, from God. He's helping us out. He's, he's, we're doing his work, and now we're getting paid for it. Okay. One of Ray McCauley, 28 million, one of, and we just saw what's going on in South Africa. One of South Africa's richest pastors at an estimated worth of 28 million, Ray McCauley was born in 1949 and is a senior pastor of Rema Bible Church. Now, we're going to get into this. That's another one from South Africa, Irene Chisfriwa. I'm learning the Kikongo with Bantu. I don't know. Um, $35 million in her church. This is where I, I'm getting into the point where, where Mosai talks about the harlot, what he's seen, the exploitation, people are telling lies, using certain abilities or certain um, things that they've learned to manipulate people into thinking that they truly are walking with the Messiah, that they're really with the Most High, that the Malikis know who they are, that they have the Holy Spirit filled. This is why when I made the video about the Holy Spirit, it's a, it was a big problem. Now let's get into it. Why? So Kimball, then down before this revelation, as we were talking about it, There are many people, hands together. I can tell you right now, we know what the hands class mean. You even got the tie colors. <laughs> people, these people are working for the false messiah, guaranteed. Because one of the things that they're gonna always try to justify when they have these type of churches and they go in and they do what they're doing with people, they are very good at manipulating and using certain abilities to control your understanding. Even the, I'm gonna tell you right now, even the Dalai Lama is a, is a member of the secret societies. And he's supposed to be a holy person that speaks in Tibet. All of these people, hands clasped, yep, better believe it. All of these people are designed to fool, to go ahead and do what it says in Matthew, where he says, I am behind, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. So now I just introduced you to, to the wolves. Why are they wolves? Because their teaching, if you actually go to any one of them and watch what they have done, has anybody legitimately done all the things of the Messiah? Uh, he talked about heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Now, the heal the sick one is the big one because how many people who claim to be in Christianity or in different religions or whatever, have been healed of this virus, okay? 
we saw one of these evangelists that I mentioned, he did a, he did one where he tried to, to get it to leave and he failed, as you know. Raise the dead, okay? Now, this is a big one for me because like Isaiah said, Satan cannot cast out Satan. This is why many people don't even realize the deception in front of them because, and no marvel, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Okay, we know that scripture very well, that he also has ministers. Of, they're masquerade as ministers of righteousness. Okay, now remember, the Most High is the greatest power, but the fallen angels also can demonstrate power. The problem is discernment. Okay. Even in these scriptures, there is tidbits as to what is going to happen to you if you really teach the truth. Look what he says. But beware of men or moon to for they will hand you over to their councils and flog you in their synagogues. And this even happened when the Roman Empire used to go after the, the true the Abantu Benduela, which later would be called Christians because of Christianos, the mixing of Helios Christos with Isaiah, Yusuf Christum, okay, where they were literally burned tortured, killed. That's why they have the martyrs in Revelation, which is similar to what we saw with those who followed Simon Toko and his teachings, because when you actually go and you try to show people the difference between what they're teaching and what is right, they will attempt to destroy you. How do we know? Look at all the wars that have been fought over religion, still fighting today. I've heard is people say Islam is a, is a religion of peace. But yet they're killing people. Judaism is supposed to be a religion of peace, okay? But yet they run the world and they're destroying people, okay? <laughs> Pretty much. Christianity is supposed to be a religion of peace, but yet fighting people. People don't even realize, okay, so Russia is our enemy. Most of, a lot of people in Russia are also Christians. So wait a minute. The United States is Christians too. Once again, the same problem. Christians fighting Christians. Who is the most, who is the, who side is the creator on? The big hustle, okay? Why is this significant? How does this, why does it matter? Because we have now pointed out several ways leading back to Yisolele in the land of Africa, Embo, there's been so many documentations, the Zapanya three and nine, the land of Katiopia. Let's look at it. We talk about Bena Congo, children of Congo, okay? Sons and daughters of Congo the truth. Let's look at the reason why they don't want Congo to unite as a nation again, because for one, the kingdom of Congo's resources are worth an estimated $24 trillion. So then why Is there so much impoverished and poverty going on? And where is the money going? There's a documentary. I love Brother Kefas did it. I think also someone else did a um, teaching on this. 
I think Brother Yanata, he talked about this. I know, but I know for sure, but Amasa did it is because the leaders of this region answer to those who are trying to exploit and take this wealth out. The fact that this country is worth this much in resources tells you that it has to be affiliated with the scriptural concept that the Most High's land is never broke. And it says that. His wealth is eternal. He has, his land is filled with milk and honey. It was, it was the most rich soil you could find. This is why we've had the debate over Palestine being up where we're, they're calling it Israel versus where the real Israel really was. Because when you look at the wealth of what was in the old one versus where we are talking about the origins where Zaire was in the Bible, the Namibia we talked about, Angola itself, okay? We talked about how Brother Headley pointed to the fact that Isolele was always in Africa. Why do they want so badly to not tell you what happened? Because of course, there was a split among the tribes that resulted in a decoy or modified version or whatever you want to call it. But the concept is, if you are king, there's even movies that talk about King Solomon's mines, his wealth. Where is it? $24 trillion of it. There's the movie that was called Congo. It's back in the, I think the mid, mid 90s. It came out early to mid 90s where they were trying to find King Solomon's wealth. Where were they looking? In Congo. In the movie, they did another movie from the 1950s, I think, or 60s, King Solomon's Mines. The map shows you Africa, Embo. Okay. Let's go to this part. Why is this, and how is this connected to religion? Because the people who are in the know understand that the children who came across in the uh, ships are the people that were sent into captivity by the Most High because the wealth alone matches Moni Congo's land. Moni Congo's land, this is where you get the money, money, I get my money from you. Money Congo, this is why the Bantu people have been the backbone of the world because where they go, so does their wealth. Because even in the captivity, what did Yakuba do? He picked up everything, they took their, their belongings, went into Kamata, Kamata was made wealthy through the blessings of Yusefu, Egypt. The same thing happened when you look at the way it wasn't just the slaves that were going, it was the wealth was going too. Ships full of gold, loaded down with minerals, diamonds, okay? Going where? Europe. America, you know, <laughs> the biggest lie that they will ever tell you about the 13 colonies is the nice Templars did not get their money just from being their wealthy aristocrats, so-and-so spoiled rich kids, okay? Where did the king of, where did England really get a lot of their wealth? France, Spain, 
This is a trade that was going on through the Muslims. They knew about the wealth of Africa. This is why they were running so many caravans up and out of it. This is how they were able to, I mean, look at Mansa, Mansa Musa was the one of the rich, next to King Solomon. He was the wealthiest dude ever. As we're now learning. The, the pharaohs were very wealthy, but this is a man who was getting serious money. From where? Emble, Africa. Build a huge fortune out of it. Okay. This is why it's important because the majority of the wealth that comes through the United States and the world markets that they don't want to tell you is connected to Africa still today. This is where many of the Khazars are running their, their finances through. That's why they own the one of the one of the richest Jewish people has serious mines in Congo. He owns a mine that puts out one billion something a year. I thought I was reading. It's not a coincidence that they needed to hustle the most highest people out from what they had when the Portuguese and other nations showed up and saw what they were sitting on. Okay. So now, where does this come from? Well, we know that the curse of Esau, let's go to Esau, his curse, okay. Now, of course, people will say, well, yeah, but there was gold in other places. And yeah, I mean, the Most High, some of his people actually had, um, there was wealth that got scattered in other places too. Though, don't think the Mayans didn't get some of this, even though they had gold in South America, the Most High has riches in a lot of places, a vast, a vast land. But for sure, Embo or Africa was very much okay. Let's go to Genesis twenty seven, twenty Now, one thing I learned, and this is in a gospel that is, I think it's in Second Ezra. It was interesting to see that the outfit or the clothes that Jacuba put on was actually the outfit that Esau used to wear that he got from Nimrod when he killed him, which was the clothes of Jacuba. So that means Jacuba was pretty big dude because he was wearing the clothes of Nimrod that was taken from Esau that came from Adama. So they kind of hid that part. It says Esau was a hairy man, so they said he took he took the goat that that was to cover his 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 arms, but he was wearing the cloak, the outfit, the leopard skin cloak of Adama. See, because he put the skins of kids of the goats upon his hands, upon his smooth of his neck. But what he was wearing, 
his outfit was the leopard skin of, of Abdama. So this is the curse of Esau, which we know Toko talked about how when he took the blood after he was killed, uh, attempted to be killed, he he, he, rec he rectified this. He said, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be thee everywhere that curses thee and blessed be he that blesses thee. Okay. This is the blessing for uh, uh, Yaquba. So this is why the Most High put him above all nations. Yisolele, that's, that's That was what was given to the Bantu people, the Banabetu of Yisolele. That was the blessing. Now, Now when, Esau, now, when Esau comes back, this is the upset part. This is what Toko did. He felt Yakuba had stolen his blessing. So now here's what he, and Saka tells Esau, behold, I have made him thy Lord, Umfumu. So, Every Bantu of the descendants of Yakuba of Yisolele was supposed to be over Esau and anywhere he dwells. But of course, we were also made the Lord of all nations because we go back to the blessing, all the Gentile nations. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. So now, Kamata, Babylon, all the nations, Native American, whatever they might be, when they come, this is how they knew, even Native Americans knew who we were because they had, other nations had to bow down to you so late from everywhere. They knew who we were. Okay, this is why we got mistreated when we got made the tail. People just don't understand that the history's been changed. But because our land at this time, this is the deception, the land where this is happening is right here. This blessing is taking place. If I'm not mistaken, he's in the land of Abana. Right here, down in here, this blessing is taking place. Look, look what we got. This is all taken here. Esau was living here. He was Ben Akongo. He knows this. He was booted out. He went up here, ran, met all the strange women. This is how he became hooked up with the Edomites. Went up in here. This blessing, that's why I say he was kicked out. This Yokuba, Yisolele, this is what I'm trying to tell people. Yisolele, Israel did not exist in the land of Canaan during the time of the blessing. He was down here. And interesting enough, this is also where technically the Canaanite, where we talk about people have been known to be canonized down here. You don't understand, once the Most High blessed Yisraeli with this land, the Canaanites moved out. Many of them we mixed with some of them we shouldn't have, but they also left. And they were giants. How many giants you know live up here? Big people like grasshoppers, like you said. The Somalis, that's the closest thing. Big people down here. Folks, you gotta, as I say, hustle. They got to hustle the knowledge to make you believe the narrative that these people up here became the real Jews, the so-called um, Hittites and all that. 
and the Edomites, by the way, who got mixed with Esau, which was, this is really the land of the Arabs who were the descendants of Ishmael, who were Shemites, which is why I try to tell you the Philistines were Hamites, Palestinians, Semites, not the same people. When they fought Goliath over here, up in here, Why is this important? Because this is how the wealth was taken, is recycled, and you are swindled into giving people who are supposed to be pastors teaching the truth. When this is the money that actually comes from the Most High that was stolen into these lands that pastors now make money off of doing tricks to convince you that they have in fact been anointed by the Most High when they are not. They are exactly what it says. The ministers of Satan, when he says they, they masquerade as ministers of righteousness, this is why they're able to convince you, oh yeah, it's okay to give this kind of money, da, 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 whatever. And you sit there and listen to them because they're all charismatic pastors doing great sermons and preachings. And even in their own preachings, they have actually given you hints that they're actually not telling you the truth. Seen it. I remember something T.D. Jakes said, I was like, he told you the truth about America. And he said, I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for it, but that's what they do. They secret society people that come on and tell you the truth because they told you, they convinced you a lie from the beginning. All right, hustle. Even with the Tokuas and Kimbanguas who are supposed to be united, there's discrepancies because the whole reality is, it goes back to what I'm gonna say with Ezekiel 37. The role of the assemblies was to make Yakuba one nation again. Here's the problem. Here, I'm going to show you why the politics of everything has changed that. Because if you make Yakuba one nation again, the wealth and inheritance goes with him. This is why you have to make an imposter who really is the wealth is spread all over the world and not in the land where they're supposed to be, where they've taken that money that is really Esau, and I'm going to get to that. This is really what they've done. This is it right here. Because most of the pastors that you do, they serve Esau. They don't serve the Most High. They serve the false narrative under a name that was never used. Like I said, if you're walking in the spirit and the truth, why you got to change the name? Aren't you going to call him by the name he usually referred to? Right? You know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Why you got to change any of the names? If you walk in the spirit and the truth. Oh, it's just translation of languages. Come on. That is not true. It was a crafty hustle because it's all about power, wealth, money, and everything that comes along with the position of what your title is, okay? People don't even realize that the, the majority, if you go look at the history of Christianity, it was not formed to save people. Say it again. That's why the seven assemblies had a problem. It was really formed out of a position of authority over worlds to become wealthy. This is why the Vatican is the wealthiest. Go look at what they work, all kind of money. But yet they're supposed to be feeding the poor hungry 
you know, starving. Well, they go and they give it to you and stuff, and they're all through their churches that they say they do. Okay. So then why do we still see so much poverty where there's many Catholic churches erected? Huge churches, by the way. Because it's not about, and even Isaiah himself said, it's not about the building, it's about the person. When he said, I should destroy this temple. Again, the manipulation is that they receive power from those who actually have, originally had the power. The salvation comes to the Yunde. So they were the ones that were wielding the power. So in order to remove that, you had to convince them to be tricked out of their power, which is why I said we had the Holy Spirit in us before slavery. And I love the fact that the Ayikikui here, he broke that all down, that the book that they gave us was the modified watered down version of what we already knew in our hearts. And by touching the book, it removed and transitioned the power to the moon daily. It was a transfer of power, but the power cannot be wielded the same way because you're not connected to Tatanzambi and Pungo Talendo. So now it becomes more of a control issue versus a saving issue, especially as we have been told now to many people who have been historically accurate with the fact that they were never coming to save anybody's soul because they didn't think we even had a soul to save. That was the way it was with the many of those priests. There was no soul. And of course they mocked it. They did the reverse of that when they did the 2001 uh, Planet of the Apes where they had the mockery of Isaiah say to the to the so-called human, is there a soul in there? Because that's what they used to think about us. Okay. Once again, major hustle. All right, let's take a look. The hustle comes from the spirit of Esau because it says. And then Saka, and then Saka answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all of his brethren have been given to him for servants. This is how you know when the Most High made us the tail and him the head now. You see the flip. Now we're the donkey, and he was the donkey <laughs> before. This is why you say servant, you become like, you know, you basically become under his command and with the corn and wine i have sustained him and what shall i do with unto thee my son and esau has that one blessing for me bless me and esau lifted his voice and wept now and saka his father and said behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above and by the sword thou shalt live so this is why those who have the spirit of Esau are always fighting. And this is why now he's built a massive military force for the plan, for the preparation of the war, because now his kingdom is the kingdom of darkness affiliated with Lucifer. And Isaiah is really representing the kingdom of light. So the war is between Yakuba and Esau. Yakuba represents the kingdom of light. Esau represents the kingdom of darkness. That's why Second Ezra said, and the end of the world is Esau, and the beginning of the, of the world is Yakuba, Jacob.
and by the sword shalt thou live, and shalt thy serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when the, they shall have dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from thy neck, which is what happened. So now, when Esau broke the yoke, which actually started as early as Kamata, <laughs> we, he started taking our inheritance. But then we were given Yusolele, the land of Yusolele. He worked to get it back from us because he said, and Esau hated Yakuba. This has not changed. He hates us so bad that all the damage you see happening to Banabetu people is his anger spiritually that is carrying it out even today. This is why you see he don't he wants you getting killed in gang fights. He wants to see you become prostituted, high on drugs, um, gay, teaching false doctrine, learning something that isn't true, reverse psychology on your brain was glad to see you become the harlot when you turned away from the Most High and was put into captivity, okay? Did everything, uh, all the things that happened to in slavery was his spirit. He wanted that to happen to Yakuba. When you see um, all of the lies in the churches, you see all these wealthy churches members, this is him exploiting you because he don't care about his offspring. Okay, the Edomites, he could care less because the, that is now, he now is, is in cahoots with Shaitani. This is why the whole purpose of him, the confederacy of the demonology, because Esau is now a demon. So he is with the demons. So his role is to make you uncomfortable while you are now in this final captivity, which is why it's so hard and the fight is intensifying to pull us out of it while he continues to lie through the social media, through, the, through everything you see on TV, why his education system was meant to misinform you while making it look like you were actually achieving something while you're serving in his military, globally by the way because his job is to was always to get yakuba to kill yakuba because he hates jacob that's why he has your identity stolen saying he is jacob no he's not that's a lie having these rabbis make up stuff all the time so the spirit of esau is what we're dealing with. And Esau can be in anybody, not just the white man. Because as long as you have wickedness in your heart and you do wicked things, he, that, is his, that is his spirit. Did that video once before. So the hustle against when it comes to religion, whether it's Judaism, Hinduism, whatever it is, that is connected to the false messiah spirit of Nimrod, who was in cahoots with Esau, even though they battle each other because of what happened in the past. The, the whole point is, it, in Satan's kingdom, there is no peace. So they're always fighting. It's not like the Most High's kingdom. Big difference. Okay? Complete opposites, including image. That's why the image of Isaiah, of, of, of Adama, has to be the complete opposite image for Satani's people. They cannot be, they have to be opposites, okay? So, the, so those who are anointed by the Most High, their image resembles the Most High, and those of the Gentiles will resemble mostly his, but still, even so, manipulate the darker skin non-Bantus. This is why they still suffer so horribly, horrifically too, okay? 
and are treated the way they're treated. Because he doesn't like that complexion at all. So you see Esau hatred was so kindled, he wanted to kill Yakuba, kill him, destroy him. This spirit, okay, because the Most High then also, because he gave up the birthright, he was already hated by the Most High. That was a curse. Now, of course, it goes to say they make up later down the road, but it still doesn't change anything. The Most High still curses his lineage let's see if we can get now this has always been the problem with us and also I, and the soccer called Yakub blessed him and charged him and said unto him thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan Kanani Now here's the here's where you know they changed it. Arise, go to Pan, Padanaram, to the house of Betu. Betu, not Bethuel, Betu, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. This is not this. I'm telling you right now, this is here. Not up here, down here. Okay. Now Esau was given the Esau was given the fat of the earth, which means he was pushed out into Europe, Asia, North America, South America, uh, Australia, and he was not white. That's a myth. He was a darker skinned dude, but he wasn't as dark as as Yakuba. Okay. But because of his mixing with strange women, which some of these strange women were actually not of this world, this is why you got people running around that you're gonna see that they're spiritually different. Okay, where did they come from? Mm -hmm. But we will see that this is what caused many of the changes in the skin, but also that already started to happen because of the curses of the Most High, even before that. Okay. Now, of course, people get angry because they're like, oh, that, they're saying, that, I try to tell people, there's no such thing as white people. This is a mistreatment of the scriptures through the fallen angels because they know who can judge them. There is not a Gentile on this earth, okay, that will obtain, I guess I'm not saying, maybe a few, not many, that will obtain the status where they will be welcomed at the same level as Jacuba. This has been the hustle of religion. That's why they're making so much money off of the lie. That's why the Most High said, if everybody's doing it, then something is wrong, okay? Because the most, the Isaiah's walk is only for a few to actually do it the right way. So if you show people you're doing it the wrong way, they will get highly upset and turn on you. That's why he said, do not give what is precious unto dogs or pigs. Why? Because those people will not see how the wool has been pulled over their eyes. And they have been manipulated to worship in the same gods that they were doing before the Messiah Hamasiah came. Same gods, different, different titles. Change it up. That's why you don't even understand the falseness of the even the concept 
of the earth itself, the seasons, the manipulation of the sorcerer, how he has changed things up. You live on a globe that spins. <laughs> Even the ancient Egyptians knew better. Even the Babylonians, they already, it comes from the ancient Babylon. They did that for the purpose of worshiping the sun god. That hasn't changed because you're back in Babylon again. The spirit of Babylon wants you to worship the sun god. The whole concept of creating what you believe today is so you can teach evolution because with the other way around, you cannot evolve. Then you have to validate the days of Noah. You cannot teach people in universities and all this stuff a different belief. You can't create and make up all these things that they teach and the concepts that they teach with the way the, if you don't remove the concept of true belief and look at it as this is just human beings being stupid or ignorant or not in tune with the fact that it comes from systems that were created by groups coming together after evolution and all these other things. Everything now scientifically is based off of evolution, which was a lie. Modified concepts of hybrids that were created and the mockery of the original darker skinned people before in the days of Noah. This is the deception, the hustle. So they're making, so you got universities and educational institutions, businesses, religious beliefs, all making money. Money, Congo's money, by deceiving the Banabetu about the real truth. This is why they don't want you to learn the Congo cosmogram or even the correct time frame of Adama's clock, which he had. Why they don't want the book of Anoka in the Bible because it erases the scientific, it calls into question the science of things. Okay. The manipulation of the brain into believing certain beliefs has been going on for generations and generations because it's not about helping people, it's about controlling people. And the way you control people is you control the knowledge, you control the power, you control the wealth, you control the resources. and you get people to can be convinced it's all okay, especially through religious belief, okay? The biggest money maker on the planet today is the destruction of other people. Billions of dollars are poured into weaponry missiles, bombs, aircraft, and whatever you name it. Okay. To control the wealth so businesses can extract it and have the ability to keep themselves safe for their theft. So basically, you got people going to jail now for stealing and you have people being rewarded for billions of dollars for doing the same thing on a higher level and then you're calling it business. This is the deception of the hustle. And then you use entertainment and various types of things to keep people from noticing, okay? 
and you set policies and political people who set up, they're set up to protect the lie by thinking you have the control, but you really don't. When the system is designed to work against you, not for you, they try to push it like that. That's why it's important to, to deal with the things of what you eat, what you what you drink, because if the mind and the body is fully aware, okay, this is why medicine is so important because the reality is, especially with Bantu, the human, the Bantu body was designed to the Most High designed the connection that were made through the holy connect the holy um the holy um alliance was changed when he just he, he okay let me explain something to you when he made a abana the first priest of his okay he was a priest the free royal priesthood he changed his body as well as him. And Saka was, a re was rewarded of that. Okay. Esau, Yakuba had the same thing. Esau got cut off. Yakuba remained, his lineage, his bloodline became a royal priesthood with all of the privileges that go along with that. Okay. The decision to do make bad decisions, when we make the decisions that are influenced through the manipulation of our people to bail and all other spirits, we lose the connection in every captivity. It's always been that way. This is why now with this final captivity, the lie had to be on such a grand scale because there were those who believed they were in your place. And our people even helped them to manipulate that in Europe because we were scattered there too. When, when there were black people who actually had more charge in that time frame, that history was altered. Because instead of, once again, the resources became an issue. If you bring Yakuba together as one stick, like it says in, in, uh, Iseka, in Iseka, yeah, Ezekiel, you bring the world back underneath because of the blessing of, of Isaka to Yakuba was the nations will serve you. Okay. When Congo was a nation, okay, there was power there. Other nations recognized it. It was a recognition of the of the authority. This is the biggest lie they won't even teach. The world was a lot different when the nation, when Congo was a nation, even though, yes, you had, because of the, because of the curse of Esau, you had wars going on in Europe. This is why European nations were always fighting each other because it's all connected. But still, the authority and dominion was to the Bantu people during this time, not complete because we were still dealing with issues, you know, being scattered somewhat. But the problem is when the Most High finally returns his people to the, where he says you are no longer a, how should I say, you're no longer a harlot to me. You're no longer doing, when you stop, when you stop doing the wickedness of idol idolatry, let's get into it. I think it's I uh, had it pulled up. So when it says it right here, and he said unto them, "Thus says the Most High: Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, 
whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation into land upon the mountains of Yisolele and one king shall be king of them all and they shall be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms at more at all neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols nor with their detestable things so what you don't understand america russia europe south america um australia india all these different countries, everything the Most High is looking at that you guys have are detestable. He's showing you. You have been deceived by the hustle to make you believe that the places where you live, the Most High favors it when he hates it. He's telling you right here. Right here in this scripture, he's saying all this stuff he hates. Nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of their dwelling places. So he is telling you, okay, but he's going to do it through what? That's that's the hidden part. This is the this is what they're not. He's not telling. He's only telling those who are chosen how this is going to happen. And this is what they're waiting for. This is what they're looking for. This is why they're trying to do everything they can to stop it, because they know you never had that status that they tricked you into believing that you did because it was always a hustle. They were making money off the lie for generations. Wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them so they shall be my people and I will be their most high. Took the zombie. And Dawidi, my servant, shall be king over them and they shall have one shepherd. So you have to look at that. Dawidi, my servant, who really represents that. And they will have one shepherd. Who is that? They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. So right now, I don't care what the Hebrew Israelites claim that they think they're doing. You cannot actually walk in the judgments and statutes correctly. You can try. But I can tell you right now, the whole system is backwards, as I said before, because even the lying signs and wonders are deceiving the heathen because they created a system that doesn't isn't real. The earth is not what they're telling you. Okay. They flip flop. They created a false calendar and the lying sign and wonder of Lucifer includes the concept of what they teach you about space and the sun and the moon, stupid wobble or whatever. Oh yeah, we traveled to, man, they didn't go anywhere. They, like I said, they created all the rockets and everything was to destroy the most high, but they're not gonna tell you that. Their job, their role was to try to destroy the most high's kingdom because they hate the most high, but in the public and in front of everybody else, they have to act like, oh, yeah, we love God. We pff, Come on, man. They don't love, if They, like I said, open your eyes. If they truly cared about what the creator wants, why do they do so many things that are the opposite? But yet they have you convinced with their boot, whatever the mojo they're using, and it is a mojo that they're using, Okay, that they represent the creator in the best way possible when they do not. Everything is all a strong delusion. Because the Gentiles cannot know the real truth. That's why now they're getting ready to really ramp up this delusion to validate what they've been teaching you through deception. And they shall dwell in the land that was given unto Yakuba, my servant. Now, we're talking about, this is how we know, okay, we're going back to the land of our forefathers. Where is that at? So if we're talking about, 
if we're talking about returning to the Bantu roots, to the Bena Congo truth, to the people of Yisolele, where they came from the kingdom of Congo, your forefathers had to be dwelling right here. This is why he had to put the sign. You, this, this was the deception. This was a deception. This was a decoy. This is the real place. This is why they don't want people to know the truth because when that happens, the wealth re, is the wealth returns to the kingdom of the Most High, and the other nations, as it said, are stripped naked. Nothing. Begging, beggars, okay? That's why he says right here, now this is how you know the other people are lying. Moreover, if, okay, if, if the other people are back in the line, where is this at? Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. This is why now they're trying to build a false tabernacle under this Messiah, that he's not the real one, that they're now going to also do the deception. Oh, yeah, the real Christ is going to sit in that tabernacle. Yeah, they got something for that, too. And it says, and the heathen shall know. That I, that so nini nanini, that the Lord, Tatanzami, do sanctify ye solele. No, Christians. Isaela, he will sanctify them, but my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. This is where the Simon Toko was pushing towards. where now the Most High has chosen people to finish the job, which is going to happen. <laughs> all the all, all children of Yisraeli will eventually become one. Now, does that mean they're going to let you just do it? No. That's why he says he has to force the issue. I will take, I will make them I will gather them. I will take them out. And this is why they need to start these wars because they know <clears throat> they have to try to stop it because if they don't stop, try to stop it, they go under. <laughs> they know they go under. The, 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 heathen, the heathen governments, the heathen nations go under. Because if he takes them out, then all of this goes back. So here's what you got to understand. You got people. This don't even make sense that y'all can't see there's something wrong with this. There's 614 billionaires in the United States right now. And it says and only seven of them are black and that's probably be many or Bantus, okay? They are not doing a doggone thing to help the kingdom of the Most High at all. Not one penny, but they'll act like they are. Do you see how many billionaires we have? The Most High is telling you right here in Ezekiel 37. Boom. That will be all over. Now you see why they got to come up with all of these false narratives and, and, and false truths to tell you what's really going on because it goes back to what it says in Isaiah chapter 2. 
again. Sorry. He is telling you right here, it shall come to pass in the last days. That means towards the end of everything that's happening, like right now, we're in the end times, that the mountain of the Most High's house, the Beitu, shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. That means everybody else is over. The nations are done. There's no more. That has to come to pass. And many people shall go and say, come ye, let us go up into the mountain of Tatanzambi, the house of the Bena, the, 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 the uh, Umfumu of Yakuba. And he will teach us his ways and walk in his paths. Who? Who's going to teach the ways? No, these, these pastors making millions of dollars, they're going to teach you the right way. The hustle, people, we've been hustled so bad. People don't even know. Giving your money away and you're not even learning this, that this is the way it has to play out. Out of Sione shall go forth the law and the word of the Most High from Salama, Yavu Salama. And this is not going to happen up here. No way. How in the world? <laughs> Common sense, people. All nations are going to flow to right here. All nations. Everybody. That's left after whatever goes down because two-thirds got to go. Come on. Common sense. Our, everybody, all the nations can't fit right here. He can't place people. What? How did? What, where are they going to go? Do you see? Yeah, let them keep lying to you. Go right ahead. Go up there. It's going to be history, real soon. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, which means there's not going to be any more fighting. No more wars. Nation will not lift up sword against. That's why he's going to sell Esau. He's done fighting because he's going to be a stubble anyway. Neither shall they learn war anymore. So you'll not be fighting. The house of Yakuba, come ye. This is Yisrael and let us walk in the light of Tatanzambi. So there ain't going to be no more iPhones. No more going shopping at the mall. Going hanging out with homies at the crib. Playing video games. Uh, vacation and Cancun. None of that. Going to the Air Force Academy to go learn how to become a pilot or whatever. Done. No more Naval Academy. No more Pentagon. How do you think this is going to happen? See, y'all got to understand this is the deception. Who they, Then who do they work for? He's taking all of this away. Therefore, has thou forsaken thy people, okay? They forsook the house of Yakuba. The Ben Abitu, because they be replenished from the east and the soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. So he's showing you witchcraft. You under witchcraft. Still, their land is filled with silver and gold, and these is the end of their treasures. Their land is full of horses, of course, and the end of their chariots, because I mean, this is Isaiah. He, didn't, he don't know what cars are called. He's not talking about diesel trucks, everything. This is the future. Their land is full of idols, and they worship the work of their hands, which, again, this is all the cities 
everything. This is why the flooding is coming right now. They're calling them climate change. Get out of here. And they mean, and the, and the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the zombie and for the glory of his majesty. That's why they got everything set up right now for them to run underground quick. They got the bullet trains. They got all the tunnels dug. They got all this stuff. They running already into the, into the rocks because they say, man, he about to turn. He, got, he about to turn it up. The lofty looks of the moon to or men shall be humbled. So he's going to make everybody that thinks they high and mighty bow down. That means all these, where was that? All these 614 billion millionaires in the United States plus the ones across the world, done, bowing down, over. Again, this is the hustle, people. You're living in the hustle right now. They just they taking all this money. They, 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 no more. I live in Colorado. No more Broncos. No more uh, stadiums filled, packed with people watching uh, the Super Bowl. None of that. For the day of the Most High of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. And boy, we got a whole lot of them, even the awakening. Upon everyone that lifted up, he shall be brought low. He's not playing. It's already stuck, man. I, that lady, <laughs> they watched the person that was the flooding in Germany. The lady said, this is supposed to happen in poor countries, not in Germany. Wait a minute. That's why he's like, hey, you're going to be humbled now. Y'all think you get, you've been doing it? What do you think this whole heat wave is about? Everything's on fire. So much rain now. Oh, yeah, keep believing what they're telling you. It's a lie. The earth, the moon's wobble causing. Come on, man. You think he created the moon? Of course, people and scientists don't say, oh, no, the moon was out of the Big Bang. Man, keep the moon wobbling. Seriously? And upon all the high mountains, upon the hills, they are lifted up. And upon every high tower, upon every fence fall. And upon the ships of Tarsus, and upon all pleasant pictures. See, he's trying to show you, because everything came out of Portugal and the European countries, that's never, it's still the same. Everything is one. He says, the lofty men of men shall bow down, the hottest of men shall be made low, and Tatanzambi shall be exalted in that day. So the most high, no, Jesus Christ, no, the most high. Isaiah Ye, will be with him. All the upper 40 will be with, uh, the Malik is going to be with him. But he, uh, Yakongo, Akongo will be exalted in that day. And the idols, the idols he shall utterly abolish. I'm telling you, man, graven images, no matter where they are, are not acceptable. People are going to find out they've been even in even in the, in the in the assemblies that think that they are doing the right things, the ones that have been set up even now, don't do it. You better get rid of these. I, man, I'm telling you, they're going down, and I'm sure the Malikis should be telling you that. I know they are. There's a transition coming, big time. And it says it right here. He just said it in the other scripture. And they shall go into the whole. This is why my dad, I was laughing. My dad said, this is, this is, this is uh, NORAD. <laughs> He's like, what? Because he used to work there. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear to the zombie and for the glory of the night. This is why they got everybody going underground right now. Everybody running underground. 
They got all kind of people with the bunkers. They're building underground cities. Yeah, they're running underground. They're going to leave you up here, though. <laughs> and in that day shall cast his idols for silver. He's going to get rid of it. See? And in that day, a moon too shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they have made for each other to worship to the molds and to the bats. To go into the clefts of the rocks, unto the tops of the rag, ragged rocks for fear. Most high and for when he arises and shake terribly. Okay, this is your 2012. Oh, yeah, it's uh, plate tectonics. It's going to be, a, uh, what do you call it, San Andreas and all that. Quit listening to the alchemist. He made all that stuff up so you, so that the Most High would be invisible to his people. He don't care about the Gentiles. They believe whatever they want to believe. But this is for the boundary people. He wants them to believe these lies. That's why he got y'all taking, there's no, we're not the same. You got to understand the world is like, okay, so the world like now, right now, and this is the mystery of the hidden truth. The real Hebrews are in, are scattered. Just like when they went to Egypt, just like when they went to Palestine, I mean, Babylon, that's what it, like they went to Persia. They're now in the global Kamata, Egypt, everywhere is worshiping the sun God. Everywhere is set up to worship the idols. Everywhere is set up to worship, and they they hide they hide in it in the form of his own scriptures that he gave to the most the Bantu people, the Tula. In your heart, not the Torah. The Torah comes from them. The, the that version that they. <laughs> Yeah, Helios Biblios, that's where the Bible comes from. The Book of the Dead. Modification. That's why Kimbongo had to say. We don't throw away the scriptures, but we get catch a thief on what they stole. Way more books than 66 and way more books than 80. That's why we had to have the Tula in your heart. And you can go and listen to the monitor will tell you what they changed. We've been talking about this. But because people are stiff-necked and they want to believe those who are agents who don't want you to know the truth, who don't want you to see, they want you to keep with the hustle because the hustle is what keeps them paid, keeps them fed, keeps the money on the table, food on the table. We know this. Get your hustle on, man. And religion is the biggest hustle as you can see, because as long as you get people to believe something, that they're convinced that they have it because you use the emotion that's affiliated with it, because the, the false Messiah spirit can also manipulate things as they showed it in the Babylonian history when she was tricking people. It's very easy. If you've never seen it before, or you've never experienced the real power or the real truth, how do you know the difference? Real simple. If you've never seen a pastor raise the dead, it's easy to tell them, oh, that was in the old days of the, of the Bible. Those were days, oh, but they have the Holy Spirit, though. But you can't raise the dead. Even though the Messiah said he give you the authority to do these things. Now, I'm not saying, I'm saying, like I said, my spirituality is still growing. So I'm not going to sit here and say I could do everything the Messiah did. Because right now, <laughs> this is the secret to this. It's not time for it to manifest yet in everybody. This is why it's the hustle. The Mwanda and Sammy will give those the power when the time comes, when it's time for the Most High to gather his people. And you will see it. This is why the war is going to look, people are going to be, when this thing go down, it's not going to be some little thing. 
is going to be huge. The Most High is going to be glory. Like he says, he will be what? Exalted. When he means exalted, he means he's going to show everybody who the real creator is over those who were the fakes. And you're going to know the power of the Most High. You will witness it. It will be no small thing. It's going to be, like he said, shaking the earth terribly. You got the creator of all things, and he is shaking the earth terribly. What will that look like? And his people, also the, the lamb, will be fighting the war, overcoming those who fought him. What is that going to look like? It's not going to be some old simple winky dink thing. It's going to be people going to be killed, dead, by the, not by the millions, by the billions. So this hustle is going to cost people billions of lives because you believe in a lie. That's why Amelia Jeremiah 16, 19 said, let's go to it real quick. It's going to happen, people. You're going to be tripping out when you realize you've been lied to for so long. Tatanzambi, the most high, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles. No, the Gentiles are supposed to be able to, they're going to be going on the rapture. Those who, the Gentiles who believe in Jesus Christ, who got converted and, and they, they, they told them, oh yeah, now you're, you're adopted as sons. Billions of people, by the way, all of a sudden now are adopted as sons and they're going to be taken up into the sky and whatever. Look at what he said. Gentiles shall come unto thee. Unto who? Unto thee. He's talking to the Bantu people. You saw the the ones especially who know. This is why the most I said there's a lot of people out there hustling lies. Because he's saying it right here. They will come unto thee, the Bongo, the Mundeli, the Kadian Pemba shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. So let me explain it to you. Wall Street, whatever they call the Chinese market, the Yang, uh, Hong Kong, um, all of these skyscrapers and people with these big businesses, 18 I mean, different companies, uh, Congress, uh, the, the, the UN and all these different things, okay, all around the world, no profit. Bunk, baloney. They're a bunch of bookies, loan sharks, and uh, extortionists with billions of dollars in their in their pocket and they put the little man in jail who they commit the crime that they have actually caused man, let me go there the system was made to create criminals let me say it again the system was created to create criminals because they knew they knew not everybody would want to do it the right way because if you encourage people to want to pursue millions and billions of dollars which they know they choose people for that you don't just get there like they keep telling you school the way they tell you in school oh work hard and you can become man that's only part of it you have to be chosen and they know. And you have to be in the system to get there. Like I said, every last one of those people I know as religious leaders are affiliated 
with secret society and they do rituals. They answer to the dragon and they know it. If you think Paula White and all these others are really talking to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are sadly deceived. We have all been. It's a hustle. That's why anybody can be God. God can be what? You can be a God. Anybody can be a God. They can be talking to anybody. But they have convinced you through all of their books and desire to be closer to the creator and all these different things. When the Most High said, the, when he said, do not, you, do you not understand salvation comes through his people who are the only ones that can really receive the Messiah and pass it to you. And those people aren't even in their land. Those people are, are in, they're in exile. So how are you getting through to anybody with people who are in exile? The only way to get it through is for those who the Most High has now set up that, re, that replaced the other assemblies. They have abilities, they have power, they have secrets in the Tokus and, Kim, and people, but even they don't understand that they had an obligation to restore Ezekiel 37 as well. And it's going to happen. Like he said, Shall a man make gods unto himself, and there are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand, mine hand and my might, and they shall know my name. Now, of course, he ain't going to say the Lord. That's going to be the deception of all of y'all. He know what his name is. He know who his people are called by. And that's the part that's going to deceive everybody. If you're called by his name, let me break it down for you real quick, the deception. The people that are called by his name, let's go to, uh, I'm almost done, Hosea 4 and 6. I mean, no, it's uh, Chronicles. Let me show you the hustle right here that they have always been doing with this. And even many of us have fallen prey to Second Chronicles, and I've seen it everywhere. And I'm like, man, I always wondered how can this be? You know, I always had it in the back of my heart, something was wrong with this scripture. Okay, you know, people who follow Christ are called Christians. That's what they say. Well, here's the problem with that. What is the creator's name? His name is not Christ. His name is not Jesus. Oh, he's Lord. He's God. He's Jehovah. Okay, so then if his name is Jehovah, aren't you supposed to be called the Jehovahists, not the Christians? If you call by his name, right? Or oh, his name is, uh, they'll say Yahweh, okay? Ben a, uh, ben a Yahweh, Yahweh Ben a Yahweh, I mean, those, but see, that's not what your, the, the Gentiles would never call that. This is why we say we are the Benakongos. 
because we know that he was now referred to as Yakongo to the Bantu people, the most high of truth. For it says, if my people who are called by my name, so this is what I'm gonna tell you, this is the problem. We have too many proud black Bantu people around this world right now, ignorant to who they are. So the Benakongo, the Bantu people, the Banabetu, the Bananzambes, okay? So call the Bantu, the people who call them by the Nodimu, okay? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, which means you bet, Bantu people need to start praying, prayer to the Abakongo, the Tanzambi, and seek my face. You need to seek the, for the face of our Congo. Not, you know, what God, anybody can be God. Satan can be God. He is, he pretends to be God all the time. Now listen to this. And turn, and turn from their wicked ways. So the Most High is saying, we as Banabetu of Yisolele, Bantu people, Tokuists, Kimbanguists, Padi, uh, uh, those who claim uh, separate from the harlot, turn into the real truth, turn away from what then I will then I will hear from heaven. This is why he said, this is why he's gonna know, like Masa always talks about who is from the most high and who is not, because you're gonna turn back, turn back to Akongo, pray, must be purified, and will forgive their zonos. He will heal their land. And this is why, let me tell you something. This is why everything is changing in Africa right now. Embo, this is why everything is changing in Europe. Because the Mosai is reversing the destruction, reversing what Esau and his spirit and all the, have done, which will include the purge and removal of wickedness. See, it says, now mine eyes shall be opened. See, because the point is, it says that in Proverbs, it says, he who hear who, I got to get it right. I know it's not the right translation because it's bound to. This is why we're in captivity, why he really didn't hear us. And now he's starting to hear us because he's turning back to captivity. He really didn't hear you. Only those that he was setting up to help return, that we had to pay attention, start paying attention. If anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, this is the new international version, but we really know it says, he that turned it away from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Let's see if I can find in Lingala, I've got to find the correct order because I know I got to learn these words. All right, so let me put let me pull it up for those who want to hear in the language. Oh, this thing. I 
one second. Why is this thing getting stuck? It comes. Apologies. All right, so I know exactly where it's at. So he's saying it, I'll put it in Lingala. Call it my sissy. 28. Moto Oyo Wakangi Matoyi Naye Mpuna. Koboya, uh, Koboya, Koyoka, Mobeko, Libondeli na ye, Ekomako and Kele na miso ya nzambi. I'm assuming, I'm hoping that's the right, if it's translated correctly, and because sometimes if they change it up because it's longer. For those who speak the Lingala, you can verify with me in my comments, but that's basically what he's saying. If you don't turn your hair, if you, if, if, if you want him to help you, you have to repent and return to the Most High because this right here, this, this is why I'm gonna tell you what, this is why many people are confused as to why the destruction is continuing, even though, what did they do? They all went to Washington, D.C., and they prayed. And like, oh, they had all the Christians show up in Washington, D.C. to try to stop all of the things that were happening. They said, oh, we got to return to God and this and this and that. Why didn't it stop? You humbled yourself. You went to Washington, D.C. You had thousands and thousands of Christians sitting there praying, asking the most, asking God, please, if we're even sitting around the, the obelisk and the most high looking, I'm like, these people have hustled you because this is not, you don't even know that your country that you have been thought to believe is the right place or is the most, uh, that I actually bless this place because, oh, America needs to turn back to God. America was created on the backs of the people that you claim that you're trying to be in their place. There is no replacement theology. That is a lie. That is the doctrine of demons. It has been a hustle. Again, your ancestors were Christians killing Christians. What side was he on? In France? I mean, think about it. When they had the 13 colonies, they had France fighting the 13 colonies. Those were Christians fighting Christians. Hello? Spain was in there. This is Esau's lie over his brother Jacuba. That's why he wanted Yakubi, Yakuba to suffer for turning their back against Tatanzambi and Pungu Tolendo because now he's like, ah, I got you again. We did it again. Did it again. And we turned away from, we turned our hearts away from Kuswa Congo and went to their version of Jesus Christ, 
which is really a combination of all of the fallen gods, that white Jesus does not exist. But I'm sure they all gonna see it when they showed it. When they give you the delusion, they gonna say, "Oh, see, he's right there." <laughs> okay, you are gonna see what's gonna happen behind that because people have already been getting played by the images they've even been showing. If you go watch the videos, they even show it sometimes uh, that that Jesus that was on the water and they saw him flying up in the sky and they and they saw him around Israel. Okay, why did he take y'all? Wait, why y'all still standing here? Why y'all ain't? Why y'all didn't go? If that was him, why y'all didn't go? <laughs> they showed him up in the eye. Uh, the guy, the one when he was flying, his, his robe was flowing in the air. Why y'all didn't go? Why? Ha what happened? Anyway, Kimball Kimble to the zombie. Zombie Yakubinsha and Zombie Moesha is going to become crazier, more crazy. Y'all have not seen nothing yet. It's going to get. Um, I got to go. What did he tell me? But I'm just saying, people. They're not playing no more, and everything's starting to change. And it will be something that you will not understand for real. Anyway, Sambulolo, Zola Quingi, and may Yakongo reign in Geta.